I'm so excited to have you here on my show, Inquisitive. What an absolute pleasure to have you here. But before we start the interview, I've got to just say one thing to you. I was just like totally surprised, you know, when I saw all this like magnificent art. I didn't realize that it was really by, um, you know, someone that looks like they should be in a bungalow. <laughs> I get that a lot. I, yeah. I genuinely get that a lot. It's probably the UK turban as well. Absolutely. Yeah, but it's, it's also because my family's based in, in that kind of scene as well. So. Absolutely. And Manj, right? Manj mm, music. That's correct. Yeah, I, I was yeah. like, I was tickle pink when you told me about that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, so art, different genres of art are kind of in the family. We're a very right? creative bunch we are. Yeah. Absolutely. Imagination is free. Okay. You got to talk to me about that. Where what, did that come from? Well, you know what? It's, it's simply what it is. When we're kids, one of the first things we do is we pick up a pen and pencil. But throughout the years, we realize we drop it. But why? Why is that happening, right? One of the, you know, everyone say, I can't draw. You don't need to be an artist to draw. You don't need to draw to be an artist. Everyone has an imagination just to be you. So that's my thing. You know, it's free. You know, just use it as much as you want. And I think that's my main message when it comes to my artwork. Why art? Um, I think it's my home and it's my escape at the same time. I think many times it's helped me get through many moments. I mean, I'm not a singer. I'm not a poet. Um, but. I see. Do but you, know you sing through your art. Yeah, still, there you go. Right? There you it go. It speaks. I mean, because at the end of the day, you know, genres of art is all about kind of how it touches you, what the emotionality yeah. of it is for you as an individual. Of your art speaks volumes from that respect. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And, and it is very emotion, emotionally responsive. Um, I only paint and produce artwork when I'm actually emotionally hit by something. So um, it, it really does play a, a heavy um, hand in what I do. So. And I wouldn't want it any other way because I feel like it's more honest for me. Absolutely. And you've got to, I mean, art has to, it's raw, it's naked, mm. it's pure, it's or it's impure, it's mm -hmm. all of those things, right? Here you are, um, you know, an Indian guy, you could have kind of done like all kinds of different types of um, things in life, but you really took to heart the ideology of, you know, truly moving your art form of forward, course, yeah. right? When did that come to you that, you know, this is more than a hobby for me, that there's, you know, there's something yeah. true for me here, there's, there's a destiny for me to fulfill mm, here? Mm. I think f from a young age, whenever you get challenged, I love a challenge, as I'm sure many of us do. You're, you're a sing, of yeah, course. Of course, there you go, <laughs> there you go. Um, well, I, when I was at art class as a youngster, my ideas were very different, right? And I know they were different because I used to kind of be that rebellious kid at art class because there was only some, so much you could copy the teacher. The whole purpose of art class was to express yourself. And my ideas were different, which resulted in kids kind of laughing at my work, which then led to a bit of bullying, which then mm. led to my teachers saying to my parents, we don't think art is for your son. Wow. Right, so my parents obviously listening to the teacher would be like, well, you know, I mean, have you thought about accountants or business? I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. Um, so I remember I used to go home crying. I used to be like really upset about this all. But at that very moment, I decided I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take the words of my teacher and use it as a, as a challenge. And here I am sitting with you about it right now. So it's crazy. I just I knew I was very passionate about it and I didn't want to let it go that easily. So how's it been though from, you know, for you, this is, a, you know, a true profession. It's a calling for you. It's, yeah, course, it's your destiny, yeah. right? But, you know, within our culture, within any culture, forget about even our culture, you know, when you say I'm going to, you know, I'm going to pursue art as, you know, my kind of journey through life. Mm -hmm. And it is so much more when you're a guy and yeah. here you are from like, you know, our community. I, I guess it is going to be a little bit more indicative. Do you have people saying, oh, come on, you yeah. know? Like, you know, you know, what are you doing? I mean, you know, get, get a real job. Yeah, no, of course, of course. I used to get a lot, the heavy, I've been doing this for five years professionally now. First two years, it was a very slow kind of cycle to get it, let people realize that this isn't a hobby. Because many people probably thought, you know, he's releasing illustrations, it will stop at some point. But they realized that actually he's not stopping. Hang on, he's doing a tour now. Hang on, he's doing exhibitions now. Okay, this is a, this is a serious thing. But you know, I still get the, uh, the old uncles there and they're like, you still doing that doodling thing? <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, I'm in Toronto doing the doodling thing right now. So, you know, I just laugh it off. But, you know, I, I feel like it's so important for me to allow people to realize it's a profession because as you mentioned in, in our community and so many more, it's not considered a, a, a profession. I don't know why. So, you know, if I make it, we all make it. So, you know, I, I feel like it, it, it's my calling to do this. If it's for, not for myself, it's for everyone else. So Absolutely. Here, here. It's why we do the, it's why we do the crazy things, right? Because right. how does society um, remain being dynamic in nature? Like, how do we not 
have it stand still mm. is for because of crazy people like you, for <laughs> crazy people like me. There we go. Where you know we say there that you know we have to explore life in every different facet that we can think there about that life is all about, That's right? I totally agree. I mean, you, it's it's. You're, I want to really get into you know kind of the ideology behind your art mm. and everything. But before I do that, I just want to ask you, um, what you know, what was the ideology behind calling yourself inquisitive? I mean. Obviously, it's a play on words. Yeah, words. Yeah. It's kind of similar to with me with open chest. Yeah, yeah, It's kind yeah. of that I naughty that. bit. There's the naughty bit, but then there's also kind of like the Pandora's mm, box, mm. right? So with you, you have a very similar kind of. That's um, correct. Yeah. yeah, right. So talk to me a little bit about that. Well, I'd love to take all the credit for the name because it's a <laughs> wonderful name. But actually, it's my mum that kind of is my best critic. So whenever I produce a drawing, she's always like, "So I'm like, why have you given blue eyes? Or what's that mark in the top left?" Or so mm. she's always posing questions. Another word for posing questions to be inquisitive without the K. So we were sitting there once, and we had a eureka. Well, she had a eureka moment. She's like. You like using Indian inks, don't you? And your work poses a lot of questions. And then we had a little gap and she's like, your work's very inquisitive. And I was like, mom, my gosh. that is it, that is it. So I, as much as I would love to say it was me, it's actually my mom. So, you know, it just flows so well with the tongue and it actually really is, you know, I, I purposely try to put hidden subliminal messages in my work. So people mm -hmm. actually question it and they're left inquisitive to want to know more. So it kind of works out. You have a lot of people that you've collaborated with as well. Mm. Um, I've been checking out your YouTube channel, yeah. and it's really interesting to see how you've kind of got this great juxtaposition between different forms of pop cultural art mm. with the spoken word poet, um, and you've also, you know, had you know R and B, hip hop kind of happening in the background. Is music kind of a big part of what inspires you? Yeah, most certainly. Yeah. Uh, coming back to the, the the what I mentioned about it being emotionally responsive. Um, when I'm producing art though, you know, I feel like um, I don't like to listen to things with too many lyrics because I can easily pick out a word which might represent anger or aggression and I'm not realizing but I picked up red or I've heard a lyric or something that says cold and I picked up blue. So it plays a massive part. And I look back at it and I'm like, why, why did I do that? And then I realize I'm listening to Little Wayne or something. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> let's tone it down and put something else on. But yeah, it really does. And, and I love that because I never know what an art piece is going to look like until it's done and I love that because it's a gift for myself. I'm very spontaneous like that. I feel like sometimes if you put too much too much time thinking about what you want to do, you devalue that moment. Mm -hmm. And just like life, it's the same thing. We overthink so much. Sometimes mm -hmm. you've got to go with the flow with it and, and that's why I present my art as it is very spontaneous and imperfect. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Perfectly imperfect. There we go. So we're definitely going to um, talk about that. Um, but before we get into it, I just want to ask you one more question. Yeah. I'm really interested in, um, you know, why ink is what you use. Mm. You know, because I've seen how you draw, you use kind of like the, the black ink. That's correct. And then you fill it out with kind of like this incredible burst of color. Incredible. Yeah. I like that. Right? <laughs> incredible. <laughs> incredible. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, you know, the, the beauty with Indian inks is um, it's, it's, a, it's a bit more fluid than watercolors. Um, and I love seeing the journey of colors blending. I've always had them from a young age. But with, with, with uh, Indian inks, what I tend to do is I soak the paper first and then kind of just put a drop of two and they, they kind of almost marry each other. It's almost a journey. Mm -hmm. um, and I love that whole idea of it, having a controlled chaos to my work, allowing it to be chaotic as it wants, but also having a sense of control to it. And I, like I said, it's, it's the whole idea of it being a gift for myself. And I, you know, I, I don't really have any other methodology in terms of my artwork other than Indian inks because I feel like it's a beautiful story in its own. And let's definitely talk about that next. Let's do it. Hey everyone, thanks so much for stopping by. I'm so happy that you're here and I look forward to you guys subscribing to my channel so we can have loads more fun here at Open Chess with me, Raj Gurn.